Hi everyone, this is Lolly. Today I want to talk about Facebook groups and specifically Facebook groups that are for crafters. And so let's get this dialogue started, shall we? So I admin about five groups. Four of them I've started and one of them was a group was given to me. So that and my communication with all my friends who admin even larger groups, we have been discussing some of the things that would make it easier for members to understand about Facebook craft groups. Now, keep in mind that this is opinion. This is um, how we run our groups, how mostly how I run my groups. And so, but it, I think it can help you because I think it'll give you some ideas of uh, some interactions that might be beneficial to you and etiquette for Facebook groups. So let's discuss in comments your opinions and what you have found helpful in your groups and and some confusion or things that you still have a hard time figuring out and we will continue discussing in the comments. Just keep your comments respectful at all times. Different opinions are fine as long as you're respectful. Okay, so craft groups are fun, imaginative, creative groups and we want to keep them fun and entertaining and inspiring and there are certain activities that can obviously put a damper on that. Um, We've had many complaints from members that have helped us to figure out through the years how to better run craft groups. And so many times we can think, I'm tired of all these rules in a group, but if you think about it, usually a rule was created because somebody got ugly in the group, right? So something happened and the group said, okay, we're going to have to create a rule to prevent that in the future. So here we go. When applying for a group, to be a member in a group, please read the group's description so you know what it's about and whether it's even a good fit for you, because not every one of them is, is a good fit for you. But also, if there are questions, things you have to agree to, sometimes it just has a little list of the, the basic rules and you have to agree, or you can they can ask questions and like, how did you find out about us? or what experience do you have with this particular craft? And so in my groups, a lot of them I do ask similar questions. Make sure you answer all of them. That is really important. I have a group where we ask, well, more than one group, but we ask two questions and inevitably somebody answers the first one and quits. And so then we have to go back and message them and say, did you see the other question? You have to answer them both in order to join. And then they don't see our um, they don't see our message because it's in the other folder in their messages. And so it just, it's very time consuming. Uh, it can lead to confusion among admin. Who are, did you message that person? Should I message that person? Inevitably, we end up declining the membership just because they didn't answer the question. So please be aware of that. Also, um, when you are allowed to join a group, it's usually best not to post, hey, thank you for letting me join. It seems like a very polite thing to do, and maybe if the group has 50 or 100 members, that's fine. But when a group starts getting into the thousands of members, just think about this, and they're admitting 20 people a day. If everybody is posting this, thank you for letting me join, then what happens is that the news feed in that group is swallowed up by these posts instead of focusing on the purpose for the group, which is inspiration and sharing ideas and showing photos. And I know that many groups even have a rule saying, do not post, thank you for allowing me to join the group. So just a thought there. It seems like the polite thing to do, but maybe... The more polite thing to do would not be to say anything or there sometimes there's a pinned uh, post at the top of the group and you can comment on that not make your own post but comment on another post saying thank you for letting me join also um know the rules so these can be shared with you in the info when you join sometimes they're in that little pop-up or they're written down in the files section more on that later or they can be in the group's about section, which in um, on a computer, it's on the right-hand side of the screen. Rules aren't fun, but again, they're there for a reason. Also, please stick to the group theme or topic or goal. So is the group about cricket? Then don't post your cameo questions and cameo projects. Is the group about pocket letters? Then don't post your memory dicks uh, photos there. 
is the uh, your memory decks yeah cards so is the group about knitting don't share your paper crafting there just keep on topic and please don't share non-creative posts such as are you having surgery tomorrow that goes on your personal profile uh, are you wanting to share your vacation photos? Again, those go on your personal profile. Do you want to share pictures of your new grandbaby? Put it on your personal profile. Do you have a prayer request? Personal profile again. And again, when you have a large group, if everyone turns it, this craft group into just a social club, you lose the focus and people do leave the group and say, this is not what I joined for. I could get that in my regular news feed on Facebook. I didn't come to this group to see all that. And so many times it feels like we have to be very harsh sometimes in deleting some of those posts, but they really don't belong there. They belong on your personal profile. So that kind of detracts from the inspiration in the group when it's all posts about our personal social life. So um, if you don't know if a post, this is really important. <laughs> if you don't know if a post is okay to share, please contact admin first. Okay, don't post. I hope that this is okay to post. If not, please delete. Because as a member, it's up to us to know whether that is okay or not to post. And so you need to find out who the admin in the group is or are. There might be more than one admin. And that's another thing, know who the admin are. That is etiquette. You're in a group, you find out who the admin are. And to do that, go to the member list and then they are at the top. You're at the top and then under that is listed all the admin so you can message one of those. But don't just post in the group, admin, please contact me. So that's another thing. Just please be aware, uh, please be aware of their time and their effort going into this group and the, do the, easy, the easier thing or the better thing. Contact them directly. Self-promotion in a group. Whew. Um, it's really better etiquette to not join a group just to promote yourself. So that means don't join a group just to promote your Facebook page. And I do mean your page, not your profile. That's two different things. Um, many people refer to their Facebook page as their own personal news feeds. That's not your page. I will give you a link down below to a video explaining this in detail. Uh, don't join a group just to promote your YouTube channel, just to promote your business, just to promote your own craft group, just to promote your Etsy sales, etc. So it is pretty obvious when someone is doing that and spamming the group. They're not interacting. They're not commenting on other people's posts and saying, you did a great job on that. I love your photo. Asking questions, doing other kinds of posts. All they do is come in in each one of their groups and they post their video, post their video, post their video, and they're not interacting. And so it is annoying and we do pick up on it, members pick up on it, and it has the opposite effect of what you may be intending and that is to build your business, when in actuality, I think it's, it's having the opposite effect. It's more like a repellent, making people not want to check out your business or your YouTube channel. So build, build a community and build relationships with people. And those are real lasting uh, followers instead of just trying to spam several Facebook groups. Also, oh boy, this is a biggie for most admins I know. Do not share live videos for any reason without permission, especially ones that have nothing to do with the group. We get people sharing all kinds of nutrition health uh, videos and jewelry making and uh, you name it in paper crafting groups or paper clip groups or whatever. Uh, you'll be watching a live video and they'll say, hey, if you want to win this thing, share this in your groups and you hit share, but you really shouldn't because I know many admin will automatically delete those without question. They won't even message you and give you any warning. They will delete you from the group if you post a live video. So you might want to be careful about that. Another uh, point of etiquette, please don't join a group and start harvesting the member list. And by harvesting, I mean accessing the member list for something that's outside the group. Like uh, if I were to join a group and start messaging members and saying, hey, I have another group you might want to join, that's really not very kind. It's just really bad etiquette. <laughs> um, also, especially if you're starting a group that's similar to the one you're in, like 
uh, if you join, uh, let's say, a pocket letter group and you start messaging the members, I'm starting my own pocket letter group, please join mine. Uh, very bad. Also, uh, you can, it's bad etiquette to harvest the member list to subvert the rules in the group. For instance, I have a group where in order to swap, you have to post pictures of three of the items that you have made, post those pictures in the group before you can swap. Well, if you really, really want to swap with someone particular and you didn't follow the rule to post three pictures, don't go and message the person behind the scenes and try and arrange swaps because it's very subversive and sneaky. And I will tell you that the majority of um, known cases in which swappers have originated swaps through messaging instead of in the group's timeline have been because they were scammers. So please, this is for your own protection. Please don't initiate or respond to swap requests that way. It should start in the group's news feed. Also, don't... Uh, if you do start your own group similar to the one you're in, don't use that main group to harvest files, ideas, photos for your own group. We've had people come in one of our groups and start their own similar group, same theme, and harvest our photos to use as their group cover photo instead of coming up with their own project. So not, not cool. Um, also, don't block admin. <laughs> Do I really need to say that? Don't block the admin. That'll get you kicked out really fast. So, attitude. Um, there are a lot of Facebook groups where they do allow lively debate and discussion that even gets sarcastic and rude and into name calling. Craft groups usually are not that kind. So, if it is that kind, you would know about it. None of my groups are that way. We don't tolerate it. So if your group requires you to be respectful, then be respectful. And, you know, as soon as you start getting really snarky, you're kind of out of the group. Um, don't insult another's work. Insult admin. Insult the rules. You may not like it that admin removed your post, uh, but many of them have reasons you don't understand. Um, that doesn't mean you need to go on social media and complain about the group. It means there may be something behind the scenes. I have had times where I even removed a member and then opened, we opened a dialogue with each other. We got it all worked out. I apologized and I appreciated that the person applied to come back in. You know, let's be mature adults and have communication about these. So, okay. Let's, Google is your friend. Let's just say that. Google is your friend. If you don't know how to find the files in your group, Google it. So, Let's say, um, let's say you use iPad exclusively for Facebook. Google, how do I find the group files, Facebook group files on an iPad? Uh, if you use an Android phone, how do I find group files on an Android phone, etc. Google it, but also state what your device is because that will help you get fine-tuned. You don't want to get an answer on how to find group files on a PC when you're using an, an uh, iPhone. So that would be very helpful. You don't know how to find the member list? Google it. You don't know how to delete your post? Google it. You don't know how to edit your post? Google it. You don't know how to find events in the group? Google it. So remember, who is our friend? Google. Okay, in a swap group, swap groups are a little different too. Swap groups tend to have maybe more rules, different rules, and I run swap groups. So if you are etiquette in swapping, if you are swapping, don't message them privately first. Communicate through the group's news feed. Say, oh, I love that work. Are you willing to swap? Make sure you know all the group's rules for that group. And then once the swap is agreed upon, start messaging each other privately, agree on a date, uh, let your partner know when you mailed his or her package, give tracking numbers. This is really important. Um, keep all your communication. Do not delete your communication. We, we as admin, when people reach out to us, we want to help you with this swap problem. But many swappers, when they get offended that someone um, swapped, flaked on their swap, didn't send or didn't uh, hold up to their part of the bargain, they get upset, they get angry, they delete all the messages. That is the wrong thing. We need you to keep those because we can show you how to uh, get screenshots of those or you could Google it 
and then we can help you through the problem, but we have to have that. Um, also, it's the only way you can put a, a flaker on a bad swappers list is to have proof that it's not one person's word against another. You can understand if someone falsely accused you of, of flaking on your swap that you would not want that. So we have to verify. So just so you know. Also, when you get your uh, when you mail that, don't post in the group, "Hey, Susie, I just mailed your swap." Don't put that in the newsfeed. Send them that in a message again, because otherwise the newsfeed in the group becomes all full of people sending photos of their envelopes. Um, also, you need to get everything down pat. When are we going to mail our swap? Uh, should we include goodies, etc.? So, also on a side note, sometimes member requests get deleted or denied. Why is that? And I, I know some reasons. I don't necessarily know reasons why your particular request for your particular group may have been denied, but I can tell you some of the reasons that I have denied membership requests in the past. Usually um, I have to protect my members and especially if it's a swap group. And so because of that, I only allow people who have been on Facebook for over a year. And that is really crucial because a flaker um, who has scammed several people and burned their bridges will open a brand new Facebook account with a brand new name, brand new profile picture, and then start joining groups again and swapping under a new identity when it's the same old flaker. So that's why we make sure that you've been on Facebook at least a year. Um, we have made exceptions when somebody whom I know would have to, for some reason, create a new account. Say I've been locked out of my other one, I can't get in, and I know it's them, they can answer certain questions that I help identify them. So there, there have been exceptions. Okay, sometimes the, we look at the profile. We look at your profile when you ask to join. If there's no profile picture, no cover photo, um, that's kind of suspicious to us. I know maybe you want your privacy, but you can even put cartoons up there if you want it, or comics. and. You know, but there's nothing up there. It makes us wonder, you know. Um, also, no craft groups at all. If you're not in any, I definitely don't want you in my swap group. Uh, and also, if it's a really private account, you know, you have it all like locked down so nobody can see anything. And I realize that I have had to do that with mine, that only friends of friends can see into my account. It's a privacy issue. Uh, but when you join a group, at least it lets us know that you are in 50 groups or 10 groups or 1,000 groups. I do know some admin who don't allow people to join their groups if they're already in 1,000 groups because they feel like you won't be um, an active member. Which brings me to another uh, point. Do inactive members get deleted from groups? I can't speak for other admin. I do know some people who delete inactive members. I do not. Um, because I don't care if you just come in once a month and look at the group and get inspired. I do hope that you get inspired and you will like or comment now and then. You don't ever have to post. Um, I just would hope that you wouldn't join just to stalk and spy to get ideas for your own groups, whatever. So after all of that, uh, I do want you to enjoy yourself in the craft groups and that's why I just wanted to bring up etiquette so that um, it would help things to go smoothly and maybe give you some reasons as to why things didn't go well in your group. And I know that if you, in your comments, if you have had uh, really bad issues with a specific group, please don't mention groups names or group admins names or people's names in the comments. Let's keep this very generic. You might say I was in a group and this happened, but don't mention the group name or I will have to delete that comment because we don't want to be, this to be a bashing session. Uh, what are your opinions on how we can make Facebook groups, creative craft groups, more um, warm and friendly and inviting, but yet also protect the members we have from scammers, from flakers, and from spammers? So what are your thoughts? Leave us comments down below and let's get this conversation going. And thank you so much, especially those of you who are in my groups. And if you are uh, interested, I also have um, my main group, which is Lolly Palooza Peeps, which is just all general creativity. So it could be anything, it could be painting, cro crochet, paper craft, scrapbooking, uh, anything uh, creative, music. So all is allowed there. And of course, we share llamas in that group.